A right triangular current loop carries a current I, and there's a constant magnetic field B directed perpendicular to one edge of this loop. And there's a constant magnetic field B directed to the right. We're given some dimensions of the triangular loop and asked to find the total force on this loop. So to find the total force, you actually want to sum up all the individual forces on each of the wires involved in the loop. So we want to use the right hand rule on each segment to see if there would be a force or not. On this lower segment we see that the current is directed opposite the field. So for that segment there will actually be no force. But now we should use the right hand rule on the vertical segment. You can put your pointer finger of the right hand directed down. You'll put the middle finger directed to the right. We see then that the thumb will point up, out of the page. So we can assign conventional directions x, y, and z. The force on this segment here is going to be out of the page. Let's calculate it though. I'll call this L1. To calculate the force on that segment, we should use F1 equals I L1 cross B. The current is just going to be represented by I, and we're going to need the length of that segment, and we'll multiply it by the B field of 2.2 teslas. Alright, so our angle here is 40 degrees. We know that L is 20 centimeters. So let's just use a little bit of trig to find L1. We can use the tangent of 40. It's going to be L1 over L. All right, so that's going to be L1 over 0.2. Now we can solve for the length L1. L1 is 0.168 meters. All right, so let's put that in. Our direction, of course, here will be k hat. So F1 is 0.369 i k hat. We'll just save that result. And now we'll try to find 
the force acting on the diagonal segment. So this cross product direction is a little bit tougher to find. We'll point our pointer finger in the direction of current. But then we have to decide which way should our middle finger point. Should it point down this way? Or would it be better to point up and to the left? The best choice is actually down. It's more aligned with the B field pointing this way than it would have been the other way. All right, so we'll have several other fingers here. And what's going to happen is our thumb will point into the page using the right hand rule. So this is our current direction. This is B and the force will be into the page. So negative K hat. Now in order to do the calculations for this one, let's go over to the side here. And we can call this wire two. We want the force on wire two, and it's going to be I times L2 cross B. Now we had said earlier that we knew the dimensions of the sides of the triangle. This was 0.168 meters. This one's 0 0.2 meters. And we want to find L2. So it's going to be this plus this. which is 0.261 meters. And we have the B field. And an angle here of 40 degrees. So when we're finding the magnitude of F2, we should use the formula I times L times B. But keep in mind that L is really pointing in this direction. It points in the same direction as current. So we're going to have to include the sine of an angle. But in this case, 40 degrees is the angle between the B field and the L vector. So we'll have F2, F2 equals I times the length times the B field sine of 40. So the strength of it comes out to 0.369i. But we want to make it into a vector as well. And it ends up being negative 0.369i k hat. So what we really have then is a loop which has a force F1 pushing upward 
in the positive k hat direction. F1 is going to push upward on the right side of the triangle, while F2 is going to push downward. These two forces are going to cancel out and sum to zero. So the net force on the loop will equal the sum of all the forces on the different wires. So here F3 is just zero. There is no force on this loop. And the reason for that was that the magnetic field was, was cutting straight across here like this. current in the loop looked like this. But the sum of the forces is simply going to be F1 plus F2 plus F3. And that's going to be positive 0.369 I minus 0.369 I. And it all adds up to zero. So even though the net force on this loop is zero, it's important to note that the net torque on it is not zero. So as a whole, the loop doesn't want to go anywhere translationally, but it would want to rotate in this field.